Hello and welcome to the Lutheran Church of Our Savior here in Greenville, South Carolina on this first Sunday in Lent. Because of the COVID situation going on, we will not be holding midweek Lenten services on Wednesday evenings. We can't sing, but we are holding a Wednesday morning Bible study and discussion for five weeks um, at 10 a, no, 11 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall, Hall during the season of Lent. And our theme this year is In Community With. And this coming Wednesday, our topic will be In Community With Creation. So we hope that you can join us. We will be wearing our masks uh, when we gather, still keeping things safe. Please keep that in mind. Uh, if if uh, you are interested in maybe having an evening Bible study, please inform Pastor Beth or myself, and we'll uh, add that. Uh, we tried uh, two last uh, uh, an Advent and uh, the evening. Uh, uh, nobody really was interested in that. Just let us know if you are. Uh, as another reminder, uh, we're collecting uh, prepackaged snacks, chips, pretzels, cookies, etc., to give to first responders and medical staff on Sunday, March the 21st, from 1.30 to 3 o'clock, when we hold in our parking lot a drive-through prayer event. That gives us a time to thank and pray for those who take care of us during emergency situations. And if you would like to help in any way, again, please get in touch with us. Well, I have no other announcements, so let us prepare our hearts for today's service by listening to the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. 
let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour, pour out, out your, your mercy over, over us. us. Our, Our sin, sin is heavy, heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee 
and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Lutheran Church of Our Savior. Today's gospel lesson has three little stories in it, but I want to talk to you really about the very first one, the one where Jesus hears God say something to him. And I want you to hear those words because I want you to hear them, that God says them to you as well. It happens when Jesus is getting baptized. Now, in Jesus' day, he actually went down into the river, and he stood there in the river and got baptized. Here at Lutheran Church of Our Savior, we bring you usually when you're a baby to this little, to the baptismal font, which is really just a bowl of water, and we pour water over your head. So Jesus was a little bit different, but it was also very much the same. And the important thing that Jesus heard at, at his baptism was God saying some words to him. And what God said is, you are my son. And I love you, and I'm proud of you. Those are words that you may hear from your mom and dad or other grown-ups sometimes. I want you to hear them from me, the pastor, and I want you hear, to hear them from God. You are God's child. God loves you, and God is proud of you. All the time, God loves you. All the time. God is proud of you all the time. You are God's child. Let's pray. Dear God, when we are baptized, you call us your child and you give us love. Sometimes, Lord, we forget that. Help us to remember it. Amen. Today's gospel lesson is all of six verses long. But in those six verses, we have three different scenes. The first one is Jesus' baptism. Now in Mark, it happens, Jesus goes down into the water, he's in the water, a dove comes down and lands on him, and then a voice from heaven says, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. There's no indication whether or not the crowd around Jesus heard that proclamation. In fact, every indication is that it was an, ex an experience that took place between Jesus and God. So the next scene, Jesus is thrown out into the wilderness where he spends 40 days facing temptation from Satan while we are told angels waited on him. First thing I want you to notice is that that verb that's translated in the NRSV, the version of the Bible we just read as thrown, is actually, or as, as drove, is actually the word thrown. This is essentially the spirit picking Jesus up and drop kicking him out into the unknown. This is not simply go and leave. This is a bouncer in a bar. Not that I've ever had experience with this. This is a bouncer in a bar throwing out the unruly patron. This is not a gentle act of kind of driving you like we might do with our children as we drive them out of our homes as they become adults. This is a, a, an act of strength and power. 
Also note that unlike Matthew's gospel, which describes all of the temptations that Jesus faced, Mark doesn't tell us anything about him. He just said Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. Each gospel gives us a little different image of how God interacts with Jesus. In the third scene from today's gospel, Jesus has come to, John's been arrested. Jesus comes to Galilee proclaiming, we are told, the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. And then repent and believe, or a better translation, have faith in the good news. If you tuned in last week, you heard my husband talk about mountaintop experiences in faith. Since Jesus, for the first thing that happens to Jesus after his baptism and God's identifying him as God's own is that time in the wilderness, let's talk about wilderness experiences in the 21st century. Wilderness experiences that maybe some of us have had. We could begin with a pandemic, couldn't we? But that's a whole world thing. We all know what that's like. We're still living in that moment. There are countless others. All of the, the images that I'm going to give you are things that I've witnessed firsthand or walked with people through as their pastor. There was one day I was shopping at the local discount store and I was going down an aisle and I realized there was a teenage girl standing alone in front of the section with all the pregnancy tests. That little girl, who, and make no mistake about it, a teenager who's pregnant is still somebody's little girl, was in wilderness of her own. Can you imagine the questions? What if it's positive? Am I ready? To be a mom, what will my parents say? Will my boyfriend support me? And then different questions, but related. What if it's negative? Do I want it to be positive? Another childhood experience, perhaps. This one I've actually lived as a child. The child who hears their parents say, we're getting a divorce. They're about to enter the wilderness. They may already be in the wilderness, having lived with parents whose differences were such that life might have been uncomfortable for the child. But there's a whole new ballpark when a separation happens. Who am I going to live with? Will my other parent have a room for me, a bed for me in their home? Will they both still love me? Will they still fight? What about the high school senior who just received the letter telling them that their first choice in colleges has rejected them? Where do I go now? Will any of my other applications be accepted? parent who learns that their child is facing a disease that has no cure and then ultimately stands beside the grave of their child? What do we do now? How do we survive in this wilderness, God? Death brings that to all of us, whether it's a parental death the death of a spouse, the death of a close friend, death brings really all of us into that kind of wilderness. But it also happens for a whole host of other reasons. You end up in an unexpected car accident and now there are injuries that prevent you from doing the work you had. 
a pandemic, which leaves people unemployed or underemployed. And now people who have been strong and independent can no longer support their families. And the list could be endless. I could keep going. I won't. And of course, it could be argued that some of our experiences in the wilderness happen because of our own doing, because of choices that we have made. I mean, our reality as Christians is God might have placed that baby in Mary's womb all those years ago, but that teenager standing in the pregnancy test section of the grocery store was probably there because of choices that she had made in her life. Maybe the couple whose children are now facing their, their parents' separation are responsible for some of the division that has brought them to that point. And it's possible that that teenager who was rejected by the college that was their first choice had that happened because their grades weren't good enough, or they weren't active enough in the community, or their grammar, punctuation, and spelling was bad in their essay, or not. But it is also true that at least as often, our experiences in the wilderness happen through no fault or responsibility of our own. Who could blame parents for a disease that takes their child's life? Who could blame the one left behind and made a widow by the death of a spouse? Victim of a car accident, the victims of a pandemic. Here are the words that God speaks to Jesus just before he's kicked out into the wilderness. You are my child, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. God made a promise to Jesus at his baptism. God makes the same promise to us God makes that same promise to you as an individual. And then in the wilderness, God makes this promise and Jesus gets thrown out into the wilderness. And what happens to Jesus in the wilderness? Angels waited on him. There are all sorts of different visions of angels drawn from scripture, but the bottom line is that angels are beings who communicate God's message. Angels are beings who share God's love. And in the 21st century, I would suggest that angels are not always some strange being that's unrecognizable from some other place. You are the angels who share God's love, who serve one another when you experience or when those around you experience the wilderness. And this is true no matter what it is that brought us to the wilderness. Whether you are that teenager standing there alone in a pregnancy test section or the adult standing beside the grave of a loved one. There are people who are God's angels in the wilderness. We see that here as we sit in a time of pandemic when hunger is abundant even more than before. And you all contributed to our Super Bowl at a higher rate than we had last year. God's angels serving others in their time of wilderness. Hear these words also from the Savior himself. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent 
and believe in the good news. The time is fulfilled, not will be, is. The time is here. The kingdom of God has come near. Again, has come, not will. It's already happened. And believe, really, have faith. This is the promise of our faith. It's already a done deal. You are God's child. You are God's beloved. You are God's servant. You are. Amen.
with the Christian church around the world, we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Even in the wilderness you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Jesus Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen.